All right, everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into another deep dive? Always. This time we're tackling how to really master physics, not just memorize it. That's right, we really went in depth for this one. It like seriously deep. We've got stacks of notes, books, articles, you name it, we probably looked at it. From those classic textbooks to the latest research papers, we didn't hold back. But you don't have to sift through all that because we're distilling it all down to the good stuff. The need to know information to really excel. So whether you're a student aiming for top marks or just someone with a curious mind who loves to learn, this deep dive is for you. And let's face it, physics can be a bit intimidating. I mean, just the thought of all those formulas and equations. Yeah, it can definitely seem like a whole other language sometimes. Exactly. But what if we told you there's a way to make it click, to really understand it, not just memorize it? That's what we uncovered in all this research, and it all starts with the foundation. Right. You can't build a house on shaky ground. Exactly. And in physics, that foundation is a solid understanding of math. Algebra, geometry, trigonometry. Those are the building blocks, right? Absolutely. Trying to grasp physics without them is like, well, imagine trying to read a book in a language you don't understand. Okay, I can see that. It's just gibberish. Well, and that's where a lot of the struggle with physics comes in. Makes sense. So what's the solution? Brush up on those math skills before diving headfirst into the physics world. Exactly. One resource we found particularly helpful for this is Preparing for General Physics by Arnold D. Pickar. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. It does a great job of connecting the math concepts to the physics ones. Right. It really helps you see how it all ties together. Like suddenly those formulas and equations start to make sense. Because you understand the language they're speaking. For example, remember Newton's second law, EFMA? Oh, how could I forget? I used to stare at that thing for hours wondering what it all meant. But once you break it down, it's actually quite elegant, isn't it? It is, once you get past the initial fear factor. Right. And that's what we want to do here, demystify those seemingly complex concepts. So tell me, how does EFMA go from being this big, scary equation to something that actually makes sense? Well, think of it like this. Imagine you're pushing a shopping cart. The harder you push it, that's the force, mm. the faster it accelerates. Yeah, right? makes sense. But now imagine the shopping cart is full of groceries, so it's much heavier. That's the mass. You'll need to apply more force to get it moving at the same acceleration. Okay, so that's where the M for mass comes in. Exactly. It's all about the relationship between those three things, force, mass, and acceleration. Wow. When you put it like that, it's like physics is happening all around us all the time. It is. And the more you understand those underlying principles, the more you start to see those connections. That's so cool. But how do we go from seeing those connections to really mastering physics, like acing those exams? That's where active learning comes in. You can't just passively read a textbook and expect to magically sink oh, in. Oh, man, I wish it were that easy. Believe me, I've tried. It's about really engaging with the material, getting your hands dirty, so to speak. So like doing experiments, solving problems, that kind of thing. Exactly. It's about finding what clicks for you because everyone learns differently. Some people are visual learners. Some people learn best by doing right. Exactly. And the key is to experiment and find what works best for you. And don't be afraid to think outside the box. Physics isn't just about memorizing formulas. It's about understanding how the world works. And it's about having the tools to figure things out, to solve problems, to think critically. I love that. It's like becoming a physics detective, unraveling the mysteries of the universe. Exactly. But remember, even the best detectives need a plan. And when it comes to physics, that means establishing a consistent study routine. Okay, so like, how much time are we talking about here? Be honest, because we know physics isn't exactly walk in the park. Even dedicating a solid 10 to 15 hours per week can make a huge difference. It's about consistency, not cramming everything in at the last minute. I was afraid you were going to say that. Trust me, your brain will thank you for it. Spreading out your study sessions over time is much more effective than trying to cram everything the night before an exam. You're preaching to the choir here. I've pulled my fair share of all-nighters, and let's just say it wasn't pretty. Well, we're all human. But remember, physics is a marathon, not a sprint. It's about building that knowledge and understanding over time. Okay, so consistent effort is key. Got it. What else can we do to set ourselves up for success? Well, two heads are often better than one, right? <laughs> Have you considered joining a study group? You know, I actually haven't. I always thought they were more about socializing than actually studying. That can definitely happen. But when done right, study groups can be incredibly valuable. It's a chance to bounce ideas off each other, 
clarify confusing concepts, and tackle problems collaboratively. I like the sound of that. It's like having a built-in support system for your physics journey. Exactly. And explaining things to others is one of the best ways to solidify your own understanding. Makes sense. So we've got our math skills sharpened, we're actively engaging with the material, and we're even considering forming a study group. What's next on the agenda for becoming physics masters? Well, all that hard work needs to translate into exam success, right? Now we're talking. We've got to be ready to apply all that knowledge when exam day rolls around. So how do we make sure we're not just prepared, but actually confident walking into that exam room? I like to think of exam prep like a strategic campaign, not just a last minute cram session. Okay, a strategic campaign. I like that. What would that look like for physics specifically? Well, it starts with that well-structured study plan we talked about earlier. Right, breaking things down into manageable chunks. Exactly. Setting realistic goals for each study session. And remember those active learning techniques we discussed. Definitely. Those were game changers for me. Absolutely. And this might seem obvious, but make sure you're reviewing past exams. You mean like digging out those old tests. Why are those so helpful? They give you a feel for the types of questions you might encounter. Okay, the format, the style. Exactly. Plus, it's a chance to spot any patterns in your own mistakes. Oh, interesting. So you can see where you might be getting tripped up and adjust your approach. Precisely. It's like getting a sneak peek into the mind of the examiner. That's a great way to put it. And another thing, when you're practicing problems, don't be afraid to experiment with different approaches. The goal is to be adaptable. Oh, I see. So it's not just about memorizing formulas. It's about understanding the concepts deeply enough to apply them in different ways. Exactly. The more tools you have in your toolbox, the better equipped you'll be to tackle any problem that comes your way. That makes a lot of sense. Speaking of tools, can we talk about those 11 immutable laws for mastering physics? I'm ready to hear more about these. All right, let's break them down because each one is crucial for building that solid foundation we keep talking about. Hit me with number one. Consistent effort. I know we said it a few times, but we can't emphasize it enough. Consistency is key. Got it. What's next? Visualization. Physics can be pretty abstract, right? Definitely. Sometimes I feel like I'm trying to wrap my head around concepts that are just floating out there in the ether. Exactly. So try to connect those concepts to real-world scenarios. Draw diagrams, watch videos, anything that helps you visualize it. Like creating a mental picture of the physics in action. Exactly. And that brings us to number three, chunked learning. Okay, so break it down. Don't try to learn everything at once. Right. It's much easier to digest information in smaller chunks. Give yourself time to really absorb each concept. Makes sense. What's number four? Understanding derivations. Now, this one is really important. Okay. Derivations. Those are the steps involved in like proving a formula. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Don't just memorize the formulas. Try to understand how they were derived. What are the underlying principles? Why do they work the way they do? So it's like the difference between knowing the answer and understanding how to get there. Exactly. It's about building a deeper understanding of the why behind the what. I can see how that would be so helpful in the long run. It absolutely is. Laugh. Now, number five might seem simple, but it's crucial. Clear diagrams. Oh, I'm all about diagrams. I'm a very visual learner. They can be incredibly helpful for visualizing complex relationships and processes. A well-drawn diagram can often be worth a thousand words. Totally agree. Okay, what's next? Number six, disciplined problem solving. Okay, disciplined problem solving. So not just jumping into a problem without a plan. Exactly. Take a strategic approach. Break the problem down into smaller, more manageable steps. So, like, have a game plan before you even start writing anything down. Precisely. It'll save you a lot of time and frustration in the long run. I can imagine. Now, what about number seven? This one's a big one, and we've touched on it already. Solid math foundation. Right, because physics builds upon those fundamental math concepts. Exactly. You're not going to get very far in physics if you're struggling with the underlying math. So make sure those foundations are strong. It's like trying to build a house on a foundation of sand. It's just not going to work. Perfectly said. All right. Number eight is exploring methods. Exploring methods. Right. There's often more than one way to solve a physics problem. Don't be afraid to try different approaches and see what clicks best for you. So it's about being adaptable, being open to different ways of thinking. Exactly. You might find one method easier than another, or one method might be more efficient for certain types of problems. Okay, I like it. What's number nine? Immediate doubt clearing. Don't let questions fester. Oh, I know what you mean. Sometimes I tend to brush those little questions under the rug, and then they come back to bite me later on. Exactly. 
it's much better to address them head on as soon as they arise. Whether it's consulting your textbook, your notes, or even asking your professor for clarification. Don't let those doubts snowball. Get them while they're small. Exactly. Now, number 10 is theory review. Okay, so after we've been diligently solving problems, what should we do? Take some time to revisit the relevant theory. Make sure you understand the concepts behind the problems you've been solving. It's like taking a step back to see the bigger picture. Exactly. It's about reinforcing those connections in your brain. Makes sense. All right, what's the final law? Number 11. Regular practice. It might sound obvious, but you'd be surprised how many people underestimate the power of practice. Practice makes progress, right? Exactly. The more you practice, the more comfortable you'll become with the material and the more confident you'll feel walking into that exam. I love how practical and action-oriented these 11 laws are. It's like having a roadmap for success in physics. That's exactly what they are. But remember, it's not just about following a set of rules. It's about cultivating the right mindset. What do you mean by the right mindset? Approaching physics with a sense of curiosity, a willingness to embrace challenges, and a genuine excitement for uncovering the mysteries of the universe. It is kind of like having the right mindset for anything, you know. Absolutely. And that brings us to some additional resources that can help you on your journey to mastering physics. Yeah, because we didn't just talk about like theory and stuff. We found some seriously cool resources. We did. I think I actually learned a lot just putting this list together. Me too. Okay, what do we have first? Well, for starters, we can't talk about physics resources without mentioning the legend himself, Walter Lewin. His lectures are free on MIT's website, and they're pure gold. They're amazing. He's got this way of explaining things that just makes it click, you know? Right. He brings so much passion and energy to every lecture. And for those who prefer visual or interactive learning, Khan Academy is another fantastic resource. They have tons of videos and practice exercises that break down complex topics into manageable pieces. I love Khan Academy. It's like having a personalized tutor available 24-7. Exactly. And if you're looking for even more in-depth explanations and interactive simulations, there's a website called The Science Cube that's definitely worth checking out. Ooh, I haven't heard of that one. It's a great resource. They have a really cool section on relativity that I highly recommend. Nice. I'll have to check that out. You should. And speaking of simulations, have you ever used FEET? It's a website developed by the University of Colorado Boulder, and it has a ton of interactive simulations for all sorts of science topics, including physics. I've heard of FEET. Are those the ones where you can, like, play with the variables and see what happens in real time. Exactly. It's so much more engaging than just reading about a concept in a textbook. You can actually experiment and see how things work firsthand. That's amazing. Technology is pretty great, right? It's like having a whole physics lab at your fingertips. It really is. And the best part is most of these resources are completely free. That's amazing. It's so cool that anyone with an internet connection can access high quality physics education these days. It truly is. And that's something you want to emphasize. No matter where you are in your physics journey, there are resources out there to help you succeed. Right. Whether you're just starting out or you're already a physics whiz, there's always more to learn. Exactly. And that's what makes physics so fascinating, right? It's this endless journey of discovery. I love that. It's like exploring a vast, uncharted territory. And every new concept you grasp is like planting your flag on a new piece of land. I like that analogy. And speaking of exploring, we've covered a lot of ground in this deep dive. We really have. We started with the importance of a solid math foundation. Then we dove into active learning techniques, explored those 11 immutable laws for mastering physics. And we talked about the importance of consistency, of not being afraid to ask for help, and of cultivating that growth mindset. Absolutely. And of course, we couldn't forget those amazing resources. So many great tools to help you on your journey. It's been quite a journey. And, you know, it's not just about acing those exams, although that's definitely a nice bonus. It's about unlocking a deeper understanding of the universe we live in. And it's about realizing that physics isn't this scary, intimidating subject. It's a fascinating, beautiful, and often surprising way of looking at the world. Couldn't have said it better myself. To all our listeners out there, remember, the power to unlock the secrets of the universe is within your grasp. Don't be afraid to embrace the challenge. Ask those questions and never stop exploring. On that note, we'll sign off for today. Until next time, happy physics everyone.